Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here, back with part four of our build of the Master Grade uh, Freedom Gundam. Now, no messing about, straight in. If you watched my previous one, uh, episode three, you'll know that by the end of it, I painted all the blue parts red. And although in the video I said I was quite pleased with it, when I watched the video back, they looked awful. They looked horrible. They looked just... I mean, if you look at that, the, the pre-shading lines are so obvious. Uh, it's not great. I watched it back and thought, no, nah, I need to sort that crap out. I think I just had the paint too thin, basically. Techniques were fine, just the paint was a bit too thin. So what I'm going to do is quickly give these a blast uh, with some more paint. I'm going to use exactly the same paint as in the last video, so it's the mixture of red and a little hint of German grey. But what I'm doing this time is I've added a little tiny bit of thinner to the actual paint pot, my custom mix, uh, and I'm just spraying that neat from the airbrush in the hope that that will blend these colours even more. So I'm going to give that a quick go now. Let's um, just zoom in. Right, where are you? There you are. Make sure you're focusated. Right, so this is the part as it stands now. Let me move my light a bit so you can actually see what's going on. Might be handy if you could see things. So that's my part as it is now. Doesn't look too bad on this part. When you see it on the wing, it looks pretty lousy. It looks just it's horrible. Um, so we're going to give that a quick do. So I've got the paint ready to roll. I'm going to get my spray booth on. Presser up, get my airbrush working. Cool, as I say, this is exactly the same paint, just not thinned quite so much. Let's give this a go. I'm not going in massively heavy, just a light mist coat as before to try and blend everything in. Let's see what happens. See that? Maybe not. I can see the panel lines, the pre-shading, just starting to fade a little bit, which is what I want. I don't want it to disappear completely, as was my original plan, not to make it disappear completely. In this case, I just want it to be a little less obvious. Focusing on the centre panels a little bit. There. And we're done. Little more subtle. Still got some pre-shading on there, but it's not quite as drastic. So, I'll go off and do the rest. Let's see what happens. Okay, right, well that's all done. Had just enough paint in the airbrush to do all the parts. As you can see now, the pre-shading is much more subtle. It's still there. Uh, it's not quite as obtrusive as it was before. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. Uh, subtle enough that it'll hide even more when we do further weathering, but it's just there, you can just see it. So I'm quite pleased with that. That's more what I'm looking for. So that's that done. Now, what happens next? Well. Hmm. Had another trauma with an airbrush. Don't know why my glasses are on there. Um, had another trauma with an airbrush. This time, oops, second pair of glasses. Oh, uh, if you might not see me wearing my big space helmet of viewing anymore, because I got some new glasses. I got normal walking around glasses for everyday use. Because my optician now tells me I'm long sighted and short sighted, as opposed to just being long sighted. So, so I got myself some nice, very focals, and I've got these reading glasses, and these are what I'm going to use when I'm modelling, so I don't need my big space helmet. I'm an old man now, I've got two pairs of glasses. God, I'll have to like wear one on top of my head or on a chain or something. Uh, old man. Anyway, the reason this is here, after painting all those red parts, um, I was having a billy of a job cleaning out the airbrush. 
paint was going everywhere and it was just coming out at the end of the nozzle. Um, now this is the Spraycraft one that I hate and now this has happened I hate it even more. Um, paint was still coming out of here because it's a side feed you get this extra pipe work and complication between the paint input and the nozzle and no matter how much I tried to clean it out I was still getting paint coming out of the nozzle and I was like oh and this is why I hate side feeds they are a real pain in the butt to clean compared to a top fed gravity fed gun where it's just a tube like that and that's it you know cleaning out my Deville bis can take five minutes if that cleaning this out can take like 10 minutes and it's every time you want to change color so anyway being a spray craft it comes with absolutely bugger all instructions so I thought well I'll try and get the nozzle off I think I can get the nozzle off and I couldn't see how and there was a little nozzle screwdriver nozzle thing in the box so it looked like the nozzle with the nut on the end of the nozzle would naturally come off and there's the nozzle in the nozzle wrench popped it off no problem cleaned it out perfect now it won't go back on it just won't go back on I don't know if it's because the little rubber o-ring at the end of the nozzle is stopping it threading in or whether this has actually just sheared this off and it's not supposed to come off and they just happen to put like what looked like a nut that just happens to fill this hole at the end of the nozzle. So that's another airbrush knackered. I mean the other one's not knackered, it just needs a new needle. I love airbrushing, but I have moments of absolute fear and terror when I take them apart to clean them because something always goes wrong. The first time I cleaned an airbrush properly and the trigger came out, it was nearly brown trousers for me because I was just no idea how to put it back in. I figured it out in the end. This one's not exactly logical. The Deville bis is fairly straightforward. But it just adds to another reason why I completely hate this side feed airbrush. So note for, for people looking at airbrushes. If you can, get a top feeder where the paint pot sits at the top. Get gravity fed. Don't get a siphon feed with the bottle because they're crap. Don't get a side feed. Because the cleanup is a pain in the butt. And be so, there's not much I can do with that now. That's just going to go in the bin. Pain, really. So, I'll have to go off and order some needles from my Deville bis. Uh, thankfully, only about seven or eight quid. I tried this needle in the Deville bis, didn't work. So, that's everything on hold now. I can't do anything else until I get my needle. So, Obviously, this for you, this is in the middle of the video, so technically I'll be back in a moment. But for me, this is the next few days of not doing anything. So I guess I'll go and play some Witcher 3 or something. Is Fallout 4 out yet? Why not? I want to play it now. I want Fallout 4. Where is it? I need, I need it to live. I need my Fallout 4 to live. Anyway, so I'll go off and wait for my thing to turn up. Uh, but for you, I shall be back in a moment when I'm not sure what we're doing, but we'll do something cool. Back in a second. And we're back. Right. I had some good uh, fortune. Fiddled around with the uh, Devilbis airbrush and the splattery paint I was getting may not have actually been due to a duff needle. It may have just been that my compressor is a bit rubbish and perhaps it's giving up the ghost and the air pressure may be a little bit too low or the paint may have been too thick. Fiddled around a little bit um, and found if I super thin the paint, I can get it to spray just about all right. Um, so I need to get a new compressor at some point, which isn't going to be any time soon because they're stupidly expensive. But it means we can carry on. So as you can see, we're going back to the, our silver, our gunmetal painted parts. Now I know where the camera's looking, you see. See? See? They're clever, me. So yeah, we're going to go back to our... Uh, uh, bleh, put my teeth in metal plated parts or metal painted parts what I'm going to do um, I'm going to paint some extra accent colours on there um, but there's something I want to do first um, well before I do that I'll be gloss varnishing it but before I do that what I want to do is darken this just ever so slightly so that it separates out from the other metallic colours I'm going to paint so for that purpose I'm going to be using some Tamiya X19 smoke which is, I reckon, the best paint ever made by anybody ever in the history of everything. Um, it is absolutely kick-ass. My camera's already moved. Hang on, let me adjust that. Wow. Wibbly wobbly. Um, it's perfect for just adding a shade, a tint to something. It's kind of a... 
gloss it's gloss color and it's ever so slightly sort of brownie colored looks like an oily color so what we're going to do is we're going to very lightly airbrush uh, some of this over all of the metallic parts it's kind of like a wash but I'm going to airbrush it rather than brush it I'm not going to brush it because it's because it's going to be thinned I don't want to risk putting too much thinner on pegs and things like that it's taking a big risk because it could go horribly wrong and just start to break the plastic apart and if it does this kit is a write-off so this might go horribly wrong and this might be the last episode of this build but we'll see anyway right so let's get in das airbrush right we will mix some of this up i'll just move some things out of the way we will mix some of this up uh, with the thinners and goodness and that so i'm going to use my standard tamir x20a thinner uh, i'm going to use my pipette to put some in the look at that wow it's magic how does that happen Ooh, i don't know some thinner in here, see there's lovely. Now I had to experiment a bit as to the right thinness of paint so we shall see how this goes. The difficulty is when I thin the paint enough that it doesn't splatter everywhere uh, it is a little bit too thin and it's kind of runny so I've really got to wing it and play by ear so this could go horribly wrong. Luckily I'm not looking for a nice firm paint finish on this I'm just gonna get a shade of tint I'll put a few drops in. Might be enough. How can we find out? Well, there's only one way. So give it the stirridge. Make sure it gets into there properly. I'm using scruffy brush. Uh, right, and let's give it a try. I need something just to do a quick test spray on. What can I spray on? I have nothing at all to spray on. Brilliant. I am right prepared, me, you see. It's the way it is. I plan everything really carefully. That's a terrible accent. I do apologise to all my Scottish viewers. You wouldn't think I was half Scottish, would you? Right, let's get the fans and shizzle on. Uh, where are we up to? Right, let's give this a go. I apologise for the white balance being crazy. Now this has been put in shot, but give it a minute. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to give it a quick blast. Let's make sure there's something coming through first and foremost. Yep, so we've got a slight wash there. As far as I can tell, it's not splurging everywhere. That might do nicely. Right, so let's give this a go. So we've got our piece, let's give it a try and see, I'm going to do it on the back first to see what happens because this is the bit you wouldn't normally see, so let's give it a go. Okay, I'm getting a bit dribbly so I'm just going to air it only just to dry it a little bit. Not the fastest process in the world. Give it another coat. It's just starting to blow out slightly, so I'm just going to give it air again. Just doing air just to try and dry it. I need to dry it faster, so I'm going to use another technique. Tried and tested technique by model makers. Let me just turn that fan off. The technique is... Good old fashioned hair dryer. Stand by for everything to blow off across the desk. Now the trick with this is not to hold it too close or in one place too long because you'll melt the plastic. So. 
smoke does take a while to dry, so sometimes you have to give it a blast. It's a very noisy episode, this one. Right, let's see how that does. It's not fully dry yet, but we'll just see how it goes. So what I need to do is find the other piece that looks like this one, which is in a place. And let's say it's there. So now we have two different pieces, both initially the same colour, and this might not come out on camera. Let's see if I can zoom in any more for you. I mark an X on my thing and then forget where it is. Very originally painted the same colour. Now you might be able to see if the light didn't shine straight on them. This one is just ever so slightly a different tone. So only very, very subtle, but that's what I'm looking for. So that when I paint um, other metallic colours over the top, they'll stand out. Because right now they won't. They'll just look the same as the gunmetal. They'll be so subtle you never see them. So, I'll crack on and get the rest of these painted. Uh, and when we come back, we'll be doing a gloss coat, I think. I'm going to focus on the metallic parts for a while, because they're the bits to paint as well, and it's how much I can do. I've only got so many sticks to grab things with, so probably do them in one batch, do all the metallic parts first. Uh, right, so I'll go and get that done. Back in a moment. Oh, actually, no, let's do some time-lapsing. Okie dokie, the smoke has now had a couple of hours to dry and as you can see hopefully uh, it's left us with a slightly darker shade to the metallic uh, pieces. So the gunmetal has been shifted brown a little bit, just a tiny bit. Uh, it's got that nice kind of steel look to it now. Um, and there's a very good reason for doing that. What I intend to do, I mean eventually what I intend to do is paint some accents and highlights like these little ribs here, I might paint gold. Um, this ring here I might paint, say, flat aluminium. Some of this frame I may even paint a matte colour, but then I'd have to do that after I've gloss varnished the whole thing. But you, you get the point, I'm going to be painting different structures on this, on this uh, inner frame. Now I'm going to now dry brush uh, some chrome silver X11 to be the sort of scuff and scrape colour for this metallic tone. Now the problem is, if I'm going to say paint something gold, I don't want to be then dry brushing chrome silver over that because chrome silver isn't a good scuff colour for gold, it makes no sense. So I'm going to do this on this colour first, then I'll paint the accents and all the little details. So, what we're going to do is a bit of dry brushing. So I have my chrome silver, uh, I have my trusty dry brushing brush or a flat brush for dry brushing. I also have a bit of kitchen roll to dry brush on but as you see when I put that in it makes my white balance go loopy so I'm going to try and keep that out of shot. I'm also trying the camera a bit closer to the desk. Uh, normally I have it a bit further away and I zoom in. I'm going to zoom in now actually a bit. Right you all feel sick now don't you? There's my marker look. And it's in the wrong place. Duh. Um, yeah normally I zoom in quite a bit but you do get that kind of grainy 1999 vision so yeah, this way I can zoom in a little less. I still have to zoom in. I couldn't have the camera right down here because then I wouldn't be able to see anything. That would be stupid. So we are going to dry brush the chrome silver. I'm just giving it a jolly good shake now. Uh, what we're going to do, dead straightforward. If you've seen this before, if you've seen me do this before, you'll know what I'm going to do. Let's move that out of the way. Throw the white balance out. I'm going to take some chrome silver. Load the brush up. Uh, and then get rid of most of the paint on the tissue. Why you do this, you crazy fool, I hear you say. Because I want to dry brush. I don't want to paint the piece. I want to just put some hints of it. Now, this stuff does dry super fast. So you have to work fast. What I'm going to do, take the dry br take the brush with almost no paint on it. I'm just going to run it across the edges. And down from the edges. And what this will do, if we're lucky is just highlight these edges. Now this chrome silver is a brilliant colour 
apart from the fact it dries like in an instant and you have to reload your brush again it's super shiny super silvery so it does make a perfect accent color for darker metals especially gunmetal I'm doing it on the edge here I don't know if you, can, you probably can't see because it it's reflecting too much but it's just popping a bit of a highlight and if I do it down the side it kind of puts a few streaks in there as well right, let me just see if I can make sure I can see what I'm doing so just do that now you see it's actually running out of paint already it's not that the brush is running out of paint I suppose it's it's more just a case that the paint is drying out on the brush already it does dry out really fast so let's get some more paint on yon brush rinse and repeat so load the brush you can't see this but get most of it off on the tissue dippy, dippy, dippy. and then have at it now you're wondering why i'm using a flat brush purely because if you use a round brush you're more likely to end up just painting the part but if you use a flat brush you can put it at 45 degrees to an edge and really pick up the edge now this might not actually come out on camera at all probably won't very well but we are now done so I'll zoom in a little bit more I know it goes more grainy I don't know if you can see any of that but basically it's just highlighted the edges put a little bit of extra shine on there sort of uh, here I can see it with my naked eye it might not come out on camera on these edges here, round this edge, it's the front there. It's just a bit more. There you go. And to the naked eye, it just gives it a bit more of metallic look. It looks less and less like a chunk of plastic, and more like something that's been made out of metal. Um, so that is dry brushing. So that needs to dry for maybe I don't know. I mean, it'll be dry fairly quickly. But I'll probably leave it to dry. It's getting late now. It's what time is it? It's half nine at night. So I'll probably leave this overnight now. Um, this Freedom Gundam build, I do have a commission going on at the same time. Um, I have my Wing Gundam going on. But the way I work commissions is Monday to Friday is commission time. Weekends, if possible, is me time when I can do other things apart from my commissions. Um, I'm happy to make models for money, but you don't get seven days out of me, not seven days a week. I do have to have my own time. And if I'm not doing this, then I'll be doing something in my personal life. So weekends are kind of kept aside for me when uh, when I'm doing a commission. Um, but I'm going to go around and do the rest of these pieces now. Um, I won't time lapse it because the last two videos have been whole chunks of time lapse. And you're probably getting sick of seeing time lapse bits. So just take it as read that what I've just done for the last few minutes is now what I'm going to do for the, all the other metallic parts. You get the idea. So I'll go away and do that. When we come back, we shall start some accent painting, I think. Little tiny details. Uh, so you know what I'm going to say, Tony. Tony. That video you... I, Tony Fairclough sent me a video, a link to a video he'd done. Uh, all I can tell you is it involved me saying back in a moment and a clip from dinosaurs and the baby going, you know, I'm the baby. Gotta love me. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen, but I can't show it to you and neither can Tony because obviously it's copyrighted and he can't put it on his channel. I can't put it on my channel. Um, so, arse. But trust me, it was the funniest thing ever. So anyway, I, I digress and you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. And I do apologise all these films that are full of in-jokes between me, Tony and other modellers. Uh, it's just the way it is. Anyway, uh, right, I'll go and do this. And when we come back, we shall do some accenting and i don't mean accents like this i mean the interesting accents not this terrible french accent which is not very good i really stopped doing that should stop doing accents shouldn't i <sighs> bye